We have to leave New York. Singers the world over make their way to New York to test themselves on its famous stages. For some, it's a journey which begins in the great cities of Europe. For others, it's just a bumpy train ride across the Hudson River. Newark, New Jersey has a proud musical tradition. In the 1960s, two schools were formed to reach out to its young people and foster talent. One of these students was Derek Lee Reagan, who was to reveal one of the foremost talents in the countertenor range. So why is it for singers that the church is the cradle of their musical life when they start? It was, actually it was mandatory. You had to be in church on Sunday morning, if not every day of the week, but Sunday for sure. And if you could sing, you were in the choir. And uh, my talent was um, sort of discovered at an early age. And I began singing in that choir loft right there. And you were the soloist. That's right. Yeah. From what age were you a soloist? Age five. Ave Maria, Schubert's Ave Maria at age five. Originally, women were forbidden to sing on the operatic stage. The earliest stars of opera were men, castrated as boys to preserve the purity of their tone, a practice outlawed in the 19th century. The countertenor is its modern equivalent, sometimes described as falsetto or false voice. Derek's voice continues the long tradition of high male voices in classical music. Every day, and even when I turn, return to America, I eat out again. I'm on Ferry Street. This is where I eat. Iberias, Iberias. What's it called up there? Brazilias. I eat at the Brazilian restaurants when I come back home. I'm not very good and not very handy in the kitchen. In the markets of Newark's Portuguese district, we found all the ingredients for a spicy chili and pepper pasta. Amazing. They're tomatillos. Aren't they fantastic? Well, they're the usual. You well, the you can make wonderful sauces with them. You know, some of the, the sauces for Spanish food and Portuguese food. Uh -huh. They're brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They Let's have a look at these chilies here. Okay. Do you think they're good enough? I think they're the mild ones. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> The jalapenos, you get the what? Yeah. We're looking for red, red peppers, red, pepper. red peppers, yes, which we don't well, see they many have them. them. Nearby is the Newark Boys Chorus School, where Derek learned to sing as a child. but it was the most profound musical experience I've ever had from 1969 to 1972, being the soprano soloist as well as the choir, of course, in the New Boys Chorus. Like a great many singers, Derek first planned a career as a pianist, studying at the Newark Community School of the Arts, then going on to graduate from Oberlin College. The piano is still an important part of his life. I always thought I was a fine pianist, 
Yes. But, and I knew by my second year I wasn't a concert pianist. I didn't want to be a concert no. pianist. It frightened me. Yes. I couldn't memorize music. Right. Yeah. I can sit here right now and that think about scary. my senior recital, and I had <laughs> ten memory slips, is what they're called. Ten. Yes. And I'm supposed to be a concert pianist? Yes. But it's hard to tell your mom, who is putting you through school mm. and fighting, you know, and trying to raise money, she goes, I want you to be a concert pianist. Right. Most of the students at Oberlin had already started playing the piano at age four. Mm. I started at age, okay, reading, I'm mm. sorry, I should say at four. I mm. started reading at maybe age 11. Mm. And there's a huge difference that's there. That's it late. is, it mm. is, as a pianist, that's mm. late to read music. Absolutely, yes. Right. So, I used to accompany a lot at Oberlin. I loved to accompany. Mm. I still do. That's actually mm. another passion. So if I ever gave the singing up, mm. I'd try to get the fingers back and accompany. I love it. That's a great gift. So what is this called? Well, I'm making you pepperoni rossi. Pepperoni con rossi. Aglio e peperoncino. Okay. E capri with penne rigati pasta. All right. And it's um, well, it's just you know a very simple Italian vegetable dish, which I think you're, you're going to love. Great. I really do think you'll love it. I'm going to pop some it. of this oil in. Oh, it's wonderful. Do you know this? This is a beautiful extra virgin olive oil. Just have a little smell of that. Mm. Fantastic. Does that smell beautiful? Mm. No. You can dress the salad just with that on its own and no vinegar, really. <laughs> is uh, olive oil something that's used in the African American tradition? Is it? Again, I uh, keep saying should be. Should be. <laughs> Why do you say should be? Well, we know it's healthier. Sure, it's healthier. And yeah, and it's also tasty. Yep. So, we've made the transition now from the piano to the voice. And so you've discovered, at this point, you're still singing as a baritone, initially? A baritone slash tenor. Slash tenor. Right. In an early music choir. Right. The Collegium Musicum is what, yes. you know, you called yes. it at yes. different universities. Yes. Director L.D. Nuremberger, and he gave me the first lead, lead to becoming a countertenor. And that's when... He said, you are a countertenor. And I asked him, well, what is that? <laughs> and he said, well, you'll know by the end of this course. <laughs> <laughs> the countertenor's voice is unique. If Derek's talent wasn't obvious to himself, it was to others. It's said that all great careers start with a sponsor. Derek's ability was first recognized by a woman who was to become his patron, Ursula Steckel. She begged him to go to Europe. This woman said to me, I've heard you in this choir, and I think you should go to Europe. And I said, oh. Okay, and she said it in 77, 78, 79, 1980. You started to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I thought, I thought, well, how am I going to get to Europe? She said, don't worry, darling. One of these days, you're going to sing for John Elliott Gardiner. I went, well, who is that? You know, she sent me a check, $600. And then it said, Ursula Stecco, reminding you, you can take this check and go to Europe, or you can send it back. Now, this is part of the story. I don't, get to, I don't get to tell this that much either. I looked at the check, and I showed my friends, just friends I'd met in Nashville, Tennessee. They said, man, shoo, 
We can buy a hundred bottles of E&J with that money. You're a shoot. You better stay, stay in Nashville, Tennessee. I said, well, I'm not sure. He said, man, let's go out now. Let's go partying. And I went back home. I was living with my aunt at the time. This is my mother's aunt, my great aunt. And she said, dear boy, you better get on out of here. She said, just like you better get on out of here.